never, ever thought I would be a healthcare hero. And you know what? I really didn't even want to be a healthcare hero. But my husband has a pre existing condition, my son has Crohn's disease, and my 87 year old mother, she lives with me. And you know what happens? You get to know the hospital. And as you start to experience with different people the same system, you get a little bit smart. <laughs> and you start to see that there are protocols, there are processes, and there is a need to advocate for yourself and your loved one. And so in my case, I was fortunate with my background in aerospace engineering and corporate America, I was able to take that background and combine it with the compassion I have for my loved ones. And I said, everything I did to help them have high performing teams can help others. You know, when my son's screaming in pain, and you ask him on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your pain level, and he says 12, you show up at the emergency room, yep. okay? You end up, in my son's case with Crohn's disease, admitted to the hospital. And you know what the greatest challenge is? We don't know how a hospital works. We, we have a loved one in pain. We don't know what's wrong with them. And the next thing you know is there's, a, I'll call it a machine, a, a, a high-performing machine that is processing lots of people. And you're there as they're going through. But, but you're not, you're, in my case, my son was up for two days screaming. We hadn't slept. We were scared. We were lost. We were confused. And how in the world are we supposed to figure out who all these people are? They're coming in the room. Um, I, I, didn't, I couldn't tell the difference between a nurse and, and the doctor and the person who was cleaning. Everyone was, it was so much. And, and then what questions do you ask? And then do, do they have time to ask? And, and even how much does this cost? Am I covered for this? Where's the doctor? Is he going to be okay? And we have to have some responsibility and we have to find the people that can help us do that. And that's what I didn't know. You know what I wanted? I just wanted a hug. And it was my son that was sick, and I was there every single second. The system wasn't designed for hugs. The system's <laughs> designed for processing, and not that it's, it's bad. It's good at that, right? It's very good at that, and, and I'm not saying it's bad. But that expectation of our roles and, and how we can get high-performing teams and get care that's meant for our preferences, our goals, and our values, who we are, can happen, but it's our job. My son found a doctor that helped him find a nutritional approach. But there are many people that I know with, for example, Crohn's disease, that take specialty drugs. And when they're first recommended to take some of these drugs, they have to ask, how much does it cost? And that means, am, do I have coinsurance? Or is it a copay? Now, what's so scary is you don't want to make a medical decision based on the price of the drugs. The day he had to choose 
uh, an approach to live with Crohn's disease. The appointment was scheduled for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And he came um, into the room and he said, well, it looks like the Crohn's has progressed. Uh, we're going to have to look at other medications. And then he hands me, and I remember it was a green, green sheets of paper, just like mm. this, five <laughs> of them. And the name of the medication was on top, and emboldened in the middle was uh, an increased, lymph, uh, increased chance of lymphoma. Do you think I heard anything he said for, he went on with that medication and he talked about three other options and I was in shock. And what I needed is exactly what you're talking about. Someone who was able to talk with me and to figure it out. Now in my case, aerospace engineering, quality, I know how to look at and evaluate options, but I'm not not everyone walks in, you know, <laughs> building, you know, jet airplanes, okay? And that's not fair to have that level of expectation. And, and so what was also fascinating to me as my son progressed um, and he had complications from a surgery, it was three weeks after the surgery and I thought he had stomach pains, so I called his pediatrician. The pediatrician thought it was the stomach flu. And what I didn't understand at that point was the connection between the operation and um, the, the pediatrician. I was supposed to be connecting all of that instead of someone saying, you know what, I'm watching her son go through a journey. Mm -hmm. They were looking at station stops. Process. Process. Boom, boom. To the point of, because that's how they're paid, Ken. And I'm not, people, these aren't, people are not bad. The system, this is to your point, the system is designed to do station stops. Okay? And what I love hearing, and I hope you're successful, is we need to look at the person and their health. And what I was able to do, and what I'm hoping to help others do, is develop those skills to know the questions to find those people but if it's part of your program um, that's the ultimate in power we have to do what's right care not too much, not too little. And the system, as you've described in the, pa in the past, they were paying for more. And more is better. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, it isn't. And sometimes more right. is more money. Right. right, more is more money. So and I'm going to give a quick example. My son, every time he was in an emergency room, CT scan. And finally, when we went um, after like the fourth one, and I learned the CT scans don't show anything, a doctor said to me, you know, Randy, one CT scan is like a thousand x-rays. If that's the situation, people might start glowing pretty soon. I didn't know that. Oh, my goodness. But that's how they were paid. And the power that I learned was the power of the word no. Ask why, say no. And you know what I discovered when you ask why and say no? They come up with plan B. There's an alternative. We didn't go to medical school. They don't teach this in high school. And the way you learn is asking questions. And Eventually we'll teach it. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But in the meantime, right, tomorrow, anyone that needs help, um, there are, um, a, as you mentioned, a lot of resources available. And, and I have a website, and they'll um, see it um, down below as we're talking. But I want everyone to know there are five questions that they can ask. And, and it will be on the website, but it's okay to ask, do I really need this and does this test? come through a certain program? So this is through There's Choosing Wisely. Choosing Wisely, so a very, very good program. So Choosing Wisely, oh my goodness, you're intimidated. 
right? There you are, you're intimidated. What should I ask? Is it okay for me to ask? You can go online, you can print off the questions, and you can go, wait, wait, wait. I need to know, what are the risks? Are there simpler, safer options? What happens if I don't do anything? And then how much does it cost? And you know what? It's okay to ask these questions. And to me, questioning protocol is the key to building that high-performing team.